love and goodness to us every day. Indeed, we live and move and have our being because of you. And Father, the gifts of your people before you, we pray that you would accept these gifts. And Lord, that you would anoint it by your spirit for the purpose of your work here on earth. We ask that you bless the hands of all those who have given and bless us all in your service. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you can turn to the one beside you and on the other side and give to them the peace of Christ. Christ like this. Let us continue to worship our God as we now sing our next hymn in the English language. In 123, what a friend we have in Jesus. sermon in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Theme for our sermon 
today, Mother's Day, faith in God is powerful when you don't give up. Faith in God is powerful when you don't give up. The text comes from our Bible reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 18 and verse 5. Because of all the trouble this widow is giving me, I will see to it that she gets her rights. If I don't, she will keep coming and finally wear me out. Luke chapter 18 and verse 5. Faith in God is powerful when you don't give up. Firstly, happy Mother's Day to us all again. Um, as was mentioned by the session clerk, our grandmothers, our aunties, our daughters, sisters, happy Mother's Day to you all. There are also families where mothers have passed away and now the fathers have taken on the role of being uh, the caregiver, the main caregiver of the family. So happy Mother's Day also to those who are parents. We know in our society, there are many different pressures that are on our mothers today. In some families, in fact, it is the mother who goes to work and it's the father who stays home, looks after the house, as well as take care, uh, take care of the children. So though the roles have sometimes in some families have been switched. And recently, many of our politicians have been talking in parliament about trying to, to close the gap, the pay gap between women and men in their workplaces. There's a lot of pressure on parents nowadays. And it's not easy to be a parent, to be a mother or to be a father. Not easy at all. But in reality, when you look at the stories in the Bible, it's always been like that. There's always been pressure on parents, been pressure on mothers, right from the very first mother mentioned in the Bible, Eve. Eve was blamed for the original sin. And one of the sins, she told one of her sons to go and harm his brother. Hagar, who was Abraham's maidservant, she had a son by him. Then Abraham sent Hagar and her son Ishmael away. And they almost died in the desert. Jochebed, the mother of Moses. Moses was born when the Egyptian pharaoh ordered that all the Hebrew male babies to be killed, to stop the number of Hebrews growing. What did Jochebed do? Put Moses in a basket, placed him in the river. Imagine you are the mother and you are having to do that. Put your baby in a basket and hide it in the river, hoping that someone will come and find the baby and save it. Mary, the mother of Jesus, there was no room in the inn for her to have a baby, for her to give birth to Jesus. Eventually, Mary and Joseph had to escape to Egypt. And then later on, when Jesus grew up, Jesus went missing. They later found him in the temple. Throughout all this time, Mary was worried, as well as Joseph. And then when Jesus was crucified and suffered, you know, throughout all that time, Mary was worried. She carried that heavy burden of worry in her heart. In our Bible reading for this morning, Jesus tells us the story about another mother. A mother who pleaded her case before a judge. This judge had a reputation for being mean and hard-headed. The Bible says this judge neither feared God nor respected people. We don't even know the name of this woman that Jesus mentioned in his parable. But the key verse, verse 5, gives us 
a picture of what she is like. Because of what she did, it made the judge change his mind. Because of all the trouble this widow is giving me, I will see to it that she gets her rights. Because if I don't, she will keep coming and finally wear me out. The judge ended up respecting this woman, this mother, because she was so persistent with her efforts to keep on coming to him, pleading her case, so that in the end, the judge had to give up and say, you know what, okay, I'll give it, I'll grant you your rights. Jesus recognizes people who have faith. Jesus hardly ever complimented his own disciples as having faith, but he often complimented other people, and often they were women. Here in this story, Jesus told is about a woman who doesn't give up arguing for her rights against her opponent. It's almost as if Jesus is saying, you have faith in God. Faith that doesn't give up, then that is powerful. That's like the theme. Faith in God is powerful if you don't give up. If you keep plodding away, if you keep on trying, there is a good chance you will always be able to achieve what you want. This woman didn't stop trying. She didn't try once and then stop. She tried again and again and again. The Bible says she kept coming to see the judge, pleading for her rights. So at the very first point, the woman believed nothing would stop her from coming to get help from the judge. Not even her background. She's a woman. She's a widow. In that time, her status was very low. But she didn't care about that. She wanted help and was determined to get it. When you come to Jesus, there are no barriers. And often the barriers that we think are there are barriers we have created. We create the barrier between ourselves and God. Sometimes we say things like, oh, I'm too busy. I don't have time for God. Sometimes we say, oh, I don't need help. I'm okay. The reality is we all need help. But the problem is, we think we don't need help, and then we don't ask for help, and we don't say anything. The woman who kept coming to the judge was so desperate for help, she kept coming, she kept asking. What, it, what that means is her efforts to ask before was turned down by the judge, but that didn't stop her from trying again and trying again. Why was this woman so determined? When I read this story, it makes me think the woman believed that even though this judge was hard-headed and mean-spirited, she believed that that judge would eventually help her. She believed that deep down, deep down in that hard-headedness of that judge, there was some good thing in him. There was, in fact, a good person, and eventually he would help her. Jesus comes to us when we make the effort. The Spirit of God gives wisdom to you when you make the effort to listen. God helps you when you make the effort to open your heart to the word of God and to learn from God's holy word. The Bible says, come close to God and he will come close to you. 
Jesus does not turn us away when we come to him for help. Jesus, who said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. Do we believe that about Jesus? Do we believe that Jesus will not turn you away when you come to him, when you pray to him? There are no barriers when you come to Christ. The second point, the woman kept coming to Jesus. She kept trying. She was not put off by being rejected. Don't give up so easily. Faith in God is powerful when you don't give up. That's part of the problem many of us have. Some people give up so easily. When the answer comes and it's a no, they give up. At the first sign of rejection, they give up. They might say, you know, well, you know, I tried and I failed. That's it. I did my best. You know what? Try again. Try a different way. Try a different approach. Do a better effort. Study harder. Work smarter. How did the woman react to the judge rejecting her? She kept coming back and asking the judge for help. You know what it's like when you know that something is not right, the way someone has treated you or the way someone has given you an answer and you know it's not right, then don't give up, but persist. If you know your rights and you know you are entitled to something like justice or being dealt with in a fair way, then stand up for yourself. This is what this woman did. She stood up for herself. She kept coming to the judge and didn't give up until he listened properly to what she had to say. And it was because of her persistence, her perseverance, the judge finally gave up and granted to her all her rights. This woman kept persisting. She didn't give up. She didn't give up. And by not giving up, she showed great faith. Faith in God that doesn't give up is powerful. The third and final point. The woman was not discouraged. She did not let her setbacks define her life and her future. She did not let her past rejections stop her from trying again and again. You know, when the judge rejected her probably many times before, she didn't start crying and go get angry and go get stroppy. And no, she didn't get nasty and walk away. She didn't stop trying, no. Instead, she kept coming back. And you could summarize her efforts by saying something like this. Whenever the judge rejected her, she would probably say to herself, yeah, I know I've come before you again and again, pleading my rights. You know, these are my rights, and I know I have a right to ask for them. But your honor, you must have some, some extra grace within you, some grace that I don't deserve, and that's what I'm asking for. And she probably would have said to herself, your honor, I'm not going to stop coming and asking until you give me what I want. Faith in God is a powerful thing when you don't give up. What kind of faith do you have? Faith that doesn't give up or faith that is easily disturbed and easily gives up because we all face barriers. We all face challenges. We all face obstacles in life things that can stand in our way from achieving what you want to achieve. But God has given to us the strength and the wisdom to conquer those obstacles. There is no barrier between us and Christ. He has already died and risen for us. We go straight to him. The barriers between you and Christ are the barriers you make. 
You know, when you feel like everything is going against you, keep trying. The Lord will help you and give you a new beginning. If you don't succeed at first, what does the saying say? Try, try, try again. Happy Mother's Day. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing to the glory of God our final hymn in the Samoan language. Hymn number 154. Tato te oli oli, of God go in peace and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remain with us now and forevermore